Hello, we're still at the Shoreline Historical Museum, and today we're going to talk about induction, uh, distinguish it from deductive lines of reasoning. There's a number of different kinds of patterns or forms of induction. If we get familiar with them, it uh, gets easier to see how the differences between them and deduction is, and we'll want to see how induction works by itself, too. Paul, Good. what kind of induction do you want to look at? Well, I thought we'd begin first with a little overview of the difference between induction and deduction. Mm -hmm. Can we just start with that first, yeah, and sure. then we'll go to some patterns of induction? So uh, what's the main difference between inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning? Well, I'd say that primarily a deductive reasoning attempts to absolutely prove the conclusion. That is, mm -hmm. the, the premises are presented in such a fashion that if the premises are true, they're going to guarantee beyond a shadow of a doubt the conclusion is true. That's the, the goal. The goal. The goal. That's the you know, arguer's intention. With induction, the arguer is intending that the premises would give good reason to believe the conclusion. Make the conclusion probably true. Better than 50% chance, but never quite guarantee the conclusion. Yes. So let's, let's then, then I'll put it this way. Yeah. Uh, a deductive argument attempts to show that the conclusion must be true if the premises are true. Mm -hmm. And an inductive argument attempts to show that the conclusion is probably true or likely to be true if the premises are true. So induction is reasoning that aims at probability but not certainty. And deduction is reasoning that aims at certainty. Okay? Now, there are certain characteristic patterns of inductive reasoning, and we will look at. Um, we're going to look at five of them in this short little video. And the first very standard common pattern of inductive reasoning is called reasoning by analogy or analogical induction or analogical argument. So in an analogical argument, an analogy is a similarity between two things. Mm -hmm. And so in an analogical argument or an analogical induction, uh, two things or more are compared. And, and the first step is to show that they have many characteristics or features in common. So let's say the two things are x and y. And we're, the analogy then is between two things, x and y. And we're showing that they have many features in common. So let's say x has features a, b, c, d, and y has features a, b, c, d, where a, b, c, d are properties or characteristics or features of a thing. So they have a lot of features in common, so they're very similar. And then the next step in an, induct in an analogical inductive argument is to suggest is to show that y has an additional feature mm -hmm. e and you need a premise Larry Bonjour at the University of Washington always used to emphasize this you need a premise that says x is not known to not have this characteristic e because if x was already known not to have it, then the argument fails. Okay. So now we have a, x and y similar in these ways. In addition, y has this additional characteristic. x is not known not to have it. So what would the conclusion be? Uh, x probably has e. I'm glad you said probably. x probably has characteristic e. They're alike in all these ways. Y has this additional feature. Since they're alike in all these ways, they're probably alike in that way, too, since X is not, not known not to have that it's character. It's an incredibly common line of reasoning. Mm -hmm. We do it all the time. Every time you go to your favorite restaurant, you're arguing for monology. Every time you buy a CD by your favorite musician, you're arguing for monology. Every time you go to your favorite... What, uh, what would be the uh, analogy with uh, a CD from your favorite musician? Well, let's say I like Miles Davis, and I do. Let's say I've got three Miles Davis CDs, and I'm thinking about buying a fourth one. He, it's Miles Davis on the three I have, uh -huh. and it's Miles Davis on the fourth one. He's playing acoustic trumpet on these three. He's playing acoustic trumpet here. He's got John Coltrane backing him up on these three, and I find out John Coltrane's backing him up on sax here. Uh, Philly Joe Jones on drums, Philly Joe Jones on drums. All done the same year. The fourth one's done the same year. I really like these three. Since they're so similar in all these relevant ways, I would conclude I probably will like that fourth CD also. Very good analogical argument. And you know your jazz, don't you? Well, a little bit of Miles Davis. Uh-huh. 
Okay, so, and, and medical research is often based on analogical reasoning, mm -hmm. right? We, we, uh, we have a, a drug for a certain kind of heart disease, and so we, the medical researchers will test it on monkeys that have that heart disease, and if the drug cures the heart disease in the monkeys, the reasoning is going to be that the monkey's heart system is similar to ours. Since the drug works on the monkey's heart, it'll probably work on our hearts. That's analogical mm -hmm. reasoning. And, and let's emphasize it's inductive reasoning, so the conclusion is not said to be certain. It's right. only said to be likely or probable. Like, I may not like that fourth Miles Davis CD. Perhaps he's incorporating monochromatic Buddhist chants on that fourth one, and I may like it more, I may like it less, but I'm never going to be able to be guaranteed to like that fourth With an season. inductive argument, you're mm -hmm. never 100% certain. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look at one more here that before we move to another spot. Let's talk about enumerative induction. To enumerate something is to list it, or make a list of it, and an enumerative induction essentially, essentially, makes a list, and then from that list it infers something that's basically a continuation of the pattern on the list. So the uh, kind of hackneyed example is uh, I observed a crow, and crow number one was black. And the next day I observed a crow, crow number two, and crow number two was black. black and so forth. So each crow I observe is black, and then I conclude after enumerating all these cases of crows I've observed that are black, I can conclude a number of things. I might conclude that the next crow is black. Well, <coughs> the next crow will probably be black. Mm -hmm. And that would be an enumerative induction. Uh, I might conclude from this instead that probably all crows are black. That would be an enumerative induction. Not guaranteed, of course. It's not know, guaranteed, it's only probable. If you had a long list of crows and they were all black, that would give you more probability the next one would be black. Yes. If you only looked at two crows and they were black, you wouldn't have quite as much of a good conclusion. Yes. So the longer the list, mm -hmm. the higher the probability that the next crow is black or that all crows are black if I conclude that general principle. And you can see you could have 10 million crows and they're all black. That's not going to absolutely guarantee the next one's black. Not 100% not guarantee. Not 100%, but you might mm -hmm. want to bet a bunch of money the next one will be black. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also the more heterogeneous and diverse the crows are, the more likely the conclusion is too. Big crows, small crows, young crows, old crows, crows in Asia, crows in Africa, crows in North America. Yes. Crows all over the place were all black. Right. Probably but if I'm only black. observing crows in my backyard, right. then, and then I go across the street, you know, the, the more homogeneous the list is, the less the probability. The more heterogeneous, the higher the probability. It seems to point out another difference between deduction and induction. With a deductive argument, the argument's either valid or invalid. It's black and white, it's going to be one or the other. Mm -hmm. and we can come up with techniques to prove it one way or the other. But with induction, there's this kind of a gradation of strength. Mm -hmm. Some arguments are stronger than others, a little better than others. Mm -hmm. They never are quite perfect, they don't quite guarantee things. But an argument with appealing to five crows would be an argument, all else being equal, would be a stronger argument than one appealing to four, uh -huh. which would be stronger than one appealing to this three. Uh -huh. And an argument with crows drawn from all over yeah. the country, stronger than one drawn with crows drawn from one uh, backyard. Yeah. So then you might say induction comes in degrees, whereas valid is an all or nothing property. Yeah. And. And, you, and, and another interesting difference between deduction and induction is with an inductive argument, you can always add premises to the argument that would make the conclusion stronger mm -hmm. or weaker. Whereas with a deductively valid argument, you can't add premises that would make it, with a deductively valid argument, you cannot add premises that would make it invalid. Right. It's either, and, and it's all or nothing, it's either valid or not. Um, this reminds me, let's make this point about uh, analogical induction. It's important that the characteristics being compared are relevant to the mm -hmm. uh, characteristic drawn in the conclusion. Right. These need to be relevant to E. 
For instance, with my Miles Davis CDs, mm -hmm. if I had three CDs and they all came with a color photograph on the jewel box, mm -hmm. and the next one had a color photograph in the jewel box, mm -hmm. that wouldn't give me any more reason to believe I'm going to like the music in this new one. That would be an irrelevant similarity. So the colored photograph on the CD box isn't relevant to the quality of right. the music. Therefore, it wouldn't be a very strong uh, item to have in the premises. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the more diverse these are, right. also, the stronger the argument with an analogical. And of course, you can attack an analogical induction by coming up with disanalogies. So this may make a strong case that X also has E, since Y does, and they have all these features in common. But if you showed a whole bunch of features that they did not have in common that were also relevant to E, that weakens the argument, doesn't it? And uh, so you can provide a disanalogy to attack an analogy. And that weakens or even dis destroys an analogical induction, showing a disanalogy.